Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you are eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. So we're continuing our conversation here on the first building block to have a solid faith foundation. We've talked about the fact that we must accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's where we even begin to start our faith life. That's where we get in, really, with Jesus. We accept Him as our Savior. We call out to Him. or The Bible says we believe on Him to forgive us of our sins and to be our Savior. And when we do that, really, that's not the end. That's just the beginning. Uh, that's when the Christian life gets exciting. And so our next really step, if you will, if we're going to take our next step, is going to be to surrender our lives. Now, this idea of surrendering our lives may be done once. It may be done twice, 10, 20, 30 times as you go throughout your life. Because really, the surrender, if you will, there are moments that you're on your knees in prayer, in your car, at an altar in church, and you just, you're surrendering your life and that at that moment, a full surrender. But really, the idea of surrender is something that we do every single day. And we're going to try to look at that as we go through uh, this episode, because we want to think about practically speaking, what does it look like to be surrendered to Christ? Uh, What does that entail for you and I? There's a passage of scripture here I'd like to read to us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. I won't read all of these just for the sake of time, uh, but just to get the context, he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Then he goes in and gives examples of things in nature that uh, God takes care of. He talks about the birds, how they don't prepare, they don't sow seed in the field and grow crops and gather in the barns. But he says, look, God takes care of them. Then he goes down to talk about the lilies of the field and how beautiful they are and how they grow, but how God takes care of them and he clothes them. And he goes down and he says this in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, these things are referencing back in our passage to the, uh, the, the desire for money, the desire for clothes, the desire for shelter, the desire for personal belongings and personal possessions. Many of those essential to our life, but that's what these things are. And he tells us here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So here we have another prerequisite, right? When he gave us the prerequisites for following him, it was a denial of self and a dying of self. Here, if you want to uh, have the prerequisite here of having all these things added unto you, you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So how can we know if we're surrendered to Jesus or not? Let me ask you a question. Let's just think through a few things on this episode. Now, if you're currently in college, let me ask you this. Why did you come to college? If you're not and you say, well, that doesn't apply to me, let me ask you this. Probably more than likely you work. Why do you have your job or why do you go to work? Answer that question in your head. Now, if you say I'm in college, you may say, well, to get a degree. You may say if you're at work, well, I go to work to support my family. These are good things. So let me ask you again on the answer that you gave yourself. Let me ask you again, why? So if you say, well, I go to college to get a degree, why? Uh, Well, to get a good career. Uh, You say, I I go to work to support my family. Why? Uh, Because we need things to live on. Okay, great. Now ask yourself why again. So to get a degree, to get a good career, why? So I can have things in life. I can live a comfortable life. And maybe even the work side would narrow down to that. And you could ask yourself why again. What I'm trying to get at is many times we look first. We have this verse backwards. Let me just say that. We do these things as our focus. We do these things first, and then we seek the kingdom of God. So if we're going to college, are we going there for a degree, a good career, uh, money so that we can have a uh, enjoyable life? 
are we going to, to, to work to because maybe we have to, uh, because we have a, a family to support or bills to pay. Uh, we, we want to enjoy things in life. We want to be able to go places. We want to be able to store up money as far as in a savings account and realize all these things are good. I'm not saying that any of them are bad, but what is wrong is when we flip-flop this verse, and that's when we understand in our lives that we are not fully surrendered to Jesus Christ, because we can say we're surrendered, we can have the mind frame that we're surrendered, but what does it look like to be surrendered every day? Well, the purpose that you get up and go to school or the purpose you get up and go to work can tell you whether you're surrendered or not, because Jesus said, do this first. And all those things you're seeking, meaning all the things that you're trying to get that degree or going to college for, all the things that you feel like you're going to work for, they're going to be added unto you regardless. He's saying, seek me first. Be surrendered to me. What does that mean? You say yes to Jesus every single day and no to self. But it means also putting him first, meaning I go to work, one, to serve Jesus Christ first. I'm going to college to serve Jesus Christ first, and then I'm going to pursue a degree or I'm going to pursue that degree through serving him. You see, it's a complete different perspective change. When we go to work knowing that we're serving Jesus Christ, we will interact with people different, we'll work different, we'll have a different attitude, we'll have a different perspective, we'll probably have a little more joy in the job and we'll realize, hey, I'm here and I'm serving Jesus Christ regardless of what happens, regardless of the pay amount, regardless of all this. And he promised me that all these things shall be added unto me. So God's going to ensure that I have the essentials of life. And you say, well, maybe I want way more than the essentials of life. And God will bless you. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee that you're going to have the largest house on the block or all the toys that maybe you want, but you can work hard that way, but not to the neglect of putting Jesus first. And that's where we get it flip-flopped so many times. Uh, so l- let's do this in our minds. I know you may not have a piece of paper. If you're sitting down, you may can grab out a piece of paper and do this, but I just imagine a circle, if you will, like a pizza, right? And there's a little dot in the middle. And if you were to have to split up your time of a week in the various things that you do and you to make a pie graph out of it. So saying you have school, you have work, you have family, you have social media, you have sleep, you have your time, right? You have piddling where you have hobbies or so forth or sports. You know, what would that look like on that circle? And what percentage would you give to everything? It helps us to see what we're doing with our time. Very importantly, yes, this could be a good exercise just to do at home. You see where you're devoting your time. Many of these things are good, and they require time. You have to sleep. You have to work. If you're in college, you have to go to school, right? You have to study. I mean, all these things are important. But what I want you to see, maybe you have a section for church or faith or or whatever. Two things I want you to see as you visualize this in your mind as we think about surrender to Jesus Christ. One is this. You cannot compartmentalize your Christian life or your surrender to Jesus. It cannot just be a a slice of pizza on the pie. Surrender to Jesus or because I'm doing church and faith over here, this 20% or 10% or 2% or 50%, whatever it is, that is not surrender to Jesus. That is compartmentalizing our Christian life, and we cannot do that. So what we want to do is, if you can imagine your pizza, your pie graph, if you'll take a circle, a much smaller circle, and just draw it in the middle around that little dot. Now, it's going, to, it's going to make it look ugly because it's going to cross over a lot of your lines right there in the center. But in that center circle, we're going to write this, these words, surrender to Jesus Christ. And what you're visualizing is we're not just going to add a pie to, of surrender to Jesus. We're not just going to give Jesus just a slice of our life. No, Jesus, surrender to Jesus goes on top of all of them. Surrender to Jesus means you're surrendered in your work to him And you're serving him first and work second. Surrender to Jesus means with your family, you are serving Jesus first and then family is second, but you're serving him through your family. 
to serve Jesus first in social media means you're serving him first, social media second, but you're looking through the lens of what you're watching, doing, posting in service to Jesus Christ, family, uh, sports. You can look at all the different areas that you devote your life, whether it's studying. You say, how on earth can I serve Jesus studying? You serve Jesus first and then study second. And when you think about serving Jesus, being surrendered to him, you're going to study hard. You're going to study efficiently. And as you just think about your life, think about every different piece of the pie of your life. Jesus is stamped there, overriding all of them. That's what surrender to Jesus looks like. Now, you and I control our lives. There's no doubt about it. You can do whatever you want. You could cut me off right now if you wanted to. You can go listen to somebody else. You can drive if you have a license and you're on your own. You can drive wherever you want to drive. You could go to class, not go to class. You could not go to work or or go to work. Uh, You can call that person, not call that person. You can do whatever you want to. Now, with that, God has given us a free will, and it's a wonderful thing. But you and I are responsible, and we will be accountable. Now, Jesus has given us everything that we need to live a successful and fruitful life. He's given us the instructions, or really the invitation to follow him. He, he's given us the instructions of salvation and also surrender of our lives. So in order for you to keep your life and not to surrender it, Jesus already told us that is to lose your life. What does that mean? It's to miss out on the purpose and joy that God desires for you. When you put God first in your life, he promises to bless you with spiritual fruit. He promises to bless you with his presence. And he promises to walk with you and work with you through all the different areas, trials, issues of life. And so I have to ask the question, Are you surrendered to Jesus Christ? Is he the center little circle on the pie, or is he just a slice of it? If that's the case, it's time to surrender. It's time right now to say, okay, Jesus, enough. Uh, Remember our call episodes back, if you've not, if you've kind of jumped in with us, our, our question is, will you put Jesus first for this semester or through the end of the year? We ask the question, who are you following this semester? Who are you following through the rest of the year right now? Who is it? Is it self? Is it other people? Is it your career? Is it school? Who are you following? And then we're challenging ourselves to put Jesus first, to say, okay, for three months, I'm going to put him first and see what happens, to see the difference. So we ask the question now, Are you surrendered to Jesus Christ? And if you're not, now's the time verbally in your mind through prayer to tell him, okay, enough. I'm going to put myself second and I'm going to put you first, Jesus. Help me to do that. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend or subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.